Pretend it's May 1999. Star Wars Episode I Phantom Menace just came out in theaters, and all the toy companies jump on the production of pod racers, lightsabers, and action figures. Meanwhile, LEGO was arguing over the idea of associating their family brand values with the likes of Star Wars due to the controversial nature of, well, wars. But fortunately, one force more powerful than anything in the world convinced them to take the deal with Lucasfilm. <laughs> this was the year that it all started for LEGO when they officially licensed Star Wars and not only created some original trilogy classics, but pretty much every set they could possibly squeeze out from episode one. What? And it's a good thing they did because more than 20 years later, Star Wars is still one of their most successful themes and boasts some of the most impressive, expensive, and rare collectible items you could imagine. And people collecting LEGO Star Wars, particularly minifigures, have never been so prominent. So why not get into the hobby of collecting LEGO Star Wars? Great question, thanks for asking. Every year, LEGO Star Wars creates anywhere from 30 to 40 new sets, and based on the last few years of data here, the total cost to purchase every single set in a given year currently ranges between $2,200 and $2,500. <laughs> But say you're smart and don't actually want to purchase every single set because you just want the minifigures. Well, it's not actually that much cheaper because LEGO's been making anywhere from 20 to 40 new minifigures each year to add to the ever-growing collection of LEGO Star Wars figures that already stands at over 1,300. But looking back at the last 23 years, some of the best, most collectible items are from over 10 years ago, making them outrageously expensive because they're no longer available. And that's because LEGO sets are retired after about a year or two, with some exceptions and whatever stock is left at retailers is bought up by collectors, smaller shops, and investors, leading us to the problem of scarcity. And you guessed it, some of the oldest sets are the most rare nowadays because LEGO just simply didn't produce as many sets as they do now, and there's just not as many sealed copies left. Now, a lot of people, mostly me, but a lot of people tend to agree that some of the best, most desirable LEGO Star Wars sets to collect are from that 2009 to 2014 era, which seems to have been a golden era for LEGO Star Wars, despite any big screen movie releases during those years. The Clone Wars literally carved out shelf space for the licensed theme to stay relevant, and the Clone Wars sets and clone minifigures are still some of the most sought after to this day, with most of the sets selling at, on average, over $300 and lots of minifigures valued at over $100. But can't LEGO just remake sets from the Clone Wars and produce new and updated versions of these beloved minifigures? Yes and no. While LEGO can make as many sets as they want, it never truly replaces the old set that will forever hold nostalgic value to those that grew up with them. Now, a popular topic in the LEGO Star Wars community is about remakes devaluing the previous version of the minifigure. For example, a new P2 Rex is supposed to come out in the UCS Venator, and people are saying that it could devalue the one-of-a-kind 2013 minifigure that's worth over $200. But I want to show you just how flawed that approach is. First of all, LEGO will never remake a figure in the exact same way. You sure about that? You sure about that? Even though this Lando minifigure looks identical, there's a back print on the torso which distinguishes it from the super rare 2003 minifigure. The new arm printed Boba Fett minifigure in this $15 mech set looks almost identical to the Cloud City Boba Fett. But if you look closely, the prints are still very different and there's no cloth piece, which is another major change in the LEGO Star Wars theme that's already been implemented with printed shoulder pauldrons and commas on clones. Furthermore, LEGO continues to develop new molded pieces and changes to pre-existing molded helmets, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Oh my god! What is that? But these small changes all make minifigure collecting that much more complicated. I mean, a single face print can be the difference between a $50 figure and a $250 figure. A single splash of blue milk made one of the most common Luke minifigures worth upwards of $40, and for a while was selling for over $75 when they were hard to come by. Figures are valued based on a slew of factors that just don't always make what? sense. Generally, if the figure only comes in that set, and that set is expensive, like an Ultimate Collector series set, it's probably going to be a valuable figure. The UCS AT-AT Snowtrooper Commander literally has one rank marking, which makes it different from the Battle Pack Snowtroopers. C-3PO, one of the most common minifigures, has dual molded legs in the UCS Landspeeder, making it worth over $20. Another factor is relevancy to the source material, and I don't know about you, but I bought up a TIE prototype and Rex's ATTE to get the Grand Inquisitor and Fifth Brother as soon as I saw them cameo in the Kenobi trailer. And sure enough, they became hard to find and their prices skyrocketed.
limited. LEGO did, however, remake these figures in the new Inquisitor transport ship, and while they're great-looking new minifigures, the value still held relatively the same if not higher for the originals, which I personally like better. But I think the biggest factor actually surrounds when and how a LEGO set or figure was released. Over the years, there's been some really exciting promos that have become quite expensive, some odd releases or production swap-outs, and just tons of other figures that have risen in value. So let's take a look at the top 25. Starting out, of course, with the most expensive chrome gold C-3PO, guys. This one had only 10,000 copies to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Star Wars back in 2007. And that's because Star Wars came out in 1977, in case you couldn't do the math there. They were randomly inserted into select sets, and the odds of finding one was 250 to 1. LEGO did another lottery move in 2009 and placed 10,000 promotional Chrome Vader minifigures in select sets in celebration of 10 years of LEGO Star Wars. And these are now worth almost $500. Everybody's favorite Cloud City Boba Fett and also the Luke and Leia all came from this Cloud City set, which is the most expensive sealed LEGO Star Wars set of all time. This Finch Dallow minifigure appeared in a short production run in the 2018 Resistance Bomber and was promptly swapped out with a generic bomber pilot, making him extremely rare. A similar occurrence also happened in the 2014 production run of The Ghost, with the black-haired and eyebrowed version of Kanan Jarrus, who was later swapped out to have brown hair to be more screen accurate. Another weird production run was in the 2009 UCS Tantive 4, and some of the Leia minifigures had this mismolded smooth hair, making it now worth almost $450, and there's even a variant with larger eyes around the same price. The most recent exclusive and valuable minifigure made was the 2019 Yuletide Pilot, which came in the Christmas X-Wing gifted to LEGO employees, making this figure quite difficult to obtain. Also difficult to obtain is the one and only OG Jango Fett from the 2002 Slave One, making this minifigure the Jango Fett equivalent to the Cloud City Boba. And while you may have known about some of those, did you know that the first ever May 4th promotion was the Shadow Arf Trooper in 2011? LEGO did something similar again in 2014 with the Darth Revan polybag, based on Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the video game, or KOTOR, if you're a real fan. Then we have adult Ahsoka Tano, P2 Captain Rex, Queen Amidala, Pre Vizsla, Watto, Darth Malgus, the Light Up Saber minifigures from 2005. Hello, but an interesting one is this Lando minifigure from the 2016 Betrayal at Cloud City set is over $200. And then there's this, female Padawan with small eyes from the Yoda Chronicles set. And I think the most fire fig to have increased this much in the last five years is of course Sassy Jango from the Hyperdrive Ring. When did he become worth over $230? I find it extremely interesting to see the value of certain minifigures because like I said, their value is calculated on a set number of factors. These factors include I don't know and jack all. So it's like watching a horse race, except you're blind and deaf and the horses are plastic. Essentially, this whole video was about how difficult it is to collect LEGO Star Wars due to the quantity, valuation of some of these figures, and the unlimited new production of LEGO Star Wars products that make it so addictive and fun to collect. And don't even get me started on LEGO Star Wars army building because I already have started. So feel free to check out some of these other videos. Don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you next time.